Hello, I'm Lisa Gray, Executive Director with the Simsbury Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us today. I'm here today with Matthew Wagner of Matthew J. Wagner Fine Photography here in Simsbury. And Matthew J. Wagner Fine Photography is our featured member for the month of March. Congratulations, Matthew, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You relaxed? Good? Okay, yeah. good. So tell us what it was that attracted you to photography. How did you first get started in photography, and when did that happen? Well, it's, uh, it's kind of a funny and uh, somewhat long story, but it's, it's an entertaining one. Uh, growing up, my favorite art form was music. I was mm -hmm. into performing and writing music and uh, singing, piano. And after leaving home at the somewhat early age of 19, I moved mm -hmm. to New York City. And within a, that first year of being away from home, I, uh, my first roommate was getting married in Italy to someone mm -hmm. from Italy. Mm -hmm. And my mom, growing up, was always the one that was in charge of documenting the family history with the, with the camera. And my dad was a little bit into it, but uh, she took that responsibility very seriously and mm -hmm. she valued the importance of photographs and uh, having photos of family. Sure. So uh, when this trip came up, she was like, you know, you really need to get a good camera. I want to get you a good camera because you never know if you're ever going to go back to Europe again. This could be a once in a lifetime trip. Mm -hmm. So take lots of photos because you never know when you're going to be back there mm -hmm. again. So I uh, went to Italy and ended up loving it and couldn't wait to go back. So uh, I did take lots of photos and then uh, <laughs> Five months later, I'd saved enough vacation to go again. Wow. Took the, took the camera with me, had a great time, and for some reason put the camera in my check-in bag, which is mm. never a good idea, and it didn't make it back, and I just oh. felt terrible, devastated, yeah. very yeah. guilty mm -hmm. about the lack of appreciation mm. for this, this gift, and for some reason, the, I said, that's it, I'm done with photography, it's not for me, mm -hmm. and I just took this fatalistic viewpoint, which I don't really do anymore, but... Yeah. Um, anyway, back at work in New York, uh, my friends that I was working were working with um, were very uh, adamant that no, no, photography is the greatest thing. You got to have a camera. Oh, mm -hmm. don't worry about that. Just get another camera. And so, more to get them to stop badgering me about it, I went ahead and got one, and spent three hundred fifty dollars on a used uh, SLR camera with a flash and a zoom <laughs> lens. And and I said, you know, I'm going to get this, but I'm going to figure out a way to pay, make it pay for itself so I can mm -hmm. redeem myself from mm -hmm. this huge guilt. So I would take it to weddings and sit on the aisle and try to get the photos of the bride and groom coming down and, and I'd get my film back and look at the results and I just didn't really like what I was mm -hmm. seeing. But I'm the type of person who's always self-taught. I would mm -hmm. always research things and, and get, look for my own answers. And uh, eventually uh, the quality of my work became good enough that uh, uh, the guy who did my wedding photography uh, saw that my work and wanted me to come along with him on his weddings oh. and that was in the mid to late 90s and by 98 someone had approached me to photograph their wedding and that's kind of how I started not knowing what else to do and uh, but I apprenticed with that photographer and and that was uh, in the late 90s moved up here in 2004 and turned into a full-time business in 2005. Wow so that's when the business started here in Simsbury mm -hmm. 2005. No, 2007 in mm -hmm. Simsbury no, 2009. Okay. <laughs> in Simsbury. That's okay. Yes, 2009. And since then, what kind of goals and accomplishments have you reached that you're really proud of? Well, there you, you could talk about a lot of the the things that looked to be important, like magazine covers or being featured in in uh, regional magazines and things like that. That was always that was a goal I've always had. But the biggest accomplishment, when I think about it, is the impact to families' lives mm. and how how what we do really is something that lasts longer than us. Um, oftentimes, sad to say, family members are lost unexpectedly and sometimes expectedly, but the only thing that's left are those family portraits or right. those, those portraits of their loved ones. And to think that I've had a role in that mm -hmm. and really helped families to cope with the loss of someone or just to remember those special people in their lives, it's, that's really a huge, mm -hmm. probably the biggest accomplishment mm -hmm. that I could think of. So what's your favorite subject to photograph? That's a great question. Mm. Um, I would have to say I really love working with animals. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see behind us, yes. we have some of my, some yes. of my favorite subjects they're here, the four-legged friends. Beautiful. And uh, mm. they're just something, I've always loved animals. Uh, I grew up with cats and dogs and around horses and ponies. 
and it's great being in the valley here. There's an abundance yeah, of that, and sure. whenever someone calls and wants to, to have portraits done either with their, their pet or just of their pet, it's a lot. I know I'm going to have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So do you photograph all pets? Do you have any funny stories So far about we haven't said unusual? no to any yeah. pets. Yeah, uh, yeah we've, uh, I have an upcoming session that I'm really looking forward to. Someone we met at the recent home show downtown. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a miniature pig. Mm. So and fun. this pig sleeps with them and so uh, on. So oh I'm like, gosh. this is going to be the next big <laughs> thing. <laughs> so um, so th that will be a first time. Yeah. So do you photograph the pet with their owner or it depends. Uh, alone or both, a little of both? Yeah, it depends. Um, for these images you see here, this was part of a personal project that I started last year called Dog Tales. Mm -hmm. And we were looking for dogs that uh, had stories. And of course, most people's dogs do have stories. Of course. And yeah. we've got a lot of rescue stories and mm -hmm. things like that. And um, I wanted to create something that was very fine art and but at the same time capture the personality of, of the mm -hmm. dogs and that's one thing that people over and over just said oh that's them that's mm -hmm. so them mm -hmm. and um but other times uh, especially with senior portraits or just especially with horses it tend to kind of lends itself to the owner being with right with the animal so right. um i've done both and it's great it's great to show that relationship between the mm -hmm. the pet owner and the and the person and you have your works displayed in several areas uh, yeah, around town. Exactly, yeah, and we're always looking for more. Mm. So um, we love it when people give us a call and say, hey, we're looking for some wall decor in our yeah. waiting room or something like that, our office. Great. And we'd love to consider those locations. We've had uh, Simsbury Library, <coughs> other libraries in the valley. The town hall has had mm -hmm. the beards of Farmington Valley, mm -hmm. one of our other projects. Um, Brookside Bagels, we, we use oftentimes, but uh, we're always looking for new venues for our work. And uh, the businesses love it because they get to have free wall decor and right. we take care of it for them and, right. and keep it fresh. And it's, uh, so it's a good symbiotic relationship. Yeah, yeah. And what do you enjoy most about your work? Uh, I love working with people, but specifically um, just helping them connect <coughs> with loved ones in their life, and even if it's themselves. Mm -hmm. Seeing, uh, when, they, when they come into the studio, they get a beautiful sight and sound presentation, and we have it on a big screen, and they sit on the couch, and the lights go down, and oftentimes there's laughter, mm -hmm. sometimes there's tears, mm -hmm. and it's just so special to touch people's heart that way, and, um, and to help them appreciate sometimes, you know, definitely that they're loved ones, but sometimes even themselves. A lot of times we're very critical of ourselves, mm -hmm. and to be able to see them in a way that's um, that other people see them and it really helps them to begin to love themselves more. Sounds like you make quite a connection with your clients. I definitely you're do. doing the sessions. That's great. And you do business portraits as well, is that correct? Yes, that's something I enjoy doing a lot as well. Do you find sometimes that people are hesitant to have business portraits taken and why do you think that is? Yeah, sometimes I wonder about that. Sometimes I wonder if people just don't think it's uh, important. They don't give it a lot of thought. Maybe they're not visually oriented mm -hmm. and they just say, oh, I need something to put in this box on this website or this place on my business card. Um, but that's the first thing people see oftentimes about you and that's something that can either attract uh, clients to you or kind of have them click to then see the, who the next person is, the next candidate is. Mm -hmm. And if you're in business for yourself or you're working for someone else, you'd want to have an image that's going to draw people to you and make me, people want to click in and find out more mm -hmm. and draw them in and that's a huge advantage that you can have in your business in your life so uh, everybody should have something done that's current yeah. uh, every three years yeah maybe um, some people do it more often than that some people less but if your business portrait hasn't been done in five years then people probably will wonder who they who they are who you are when you walk and actually meet them in person right right and, and as the saying goes you have to put your best face forward exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. and you do family portraits as well I've seen some gorgeous family portraits mm -hmm. that you've done why do you think it's so important for a family to have their portraits done on a regular basis well as we've mentioned other reasons previously in the mm -hmm. interview here but another reason is we think about how much time uh, the breadwinners spend outside the family, mm -hmm. outside the home, I should say, uh, working hard, trying to provide a, a comfortable home and a, 
uh, the things that the family needs and wants. And it's, it's a huge investment. A lot of times uh, families or family heads or those that are earning the money in the family wish they could be with them, their family more mm -hmm. because that's the reason they're doing it. And children are a 18 to 20 year project sometimes mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a huge investment and that's something that should be celebrated. It mm -hmm. should be, um, it should be displayed. It's something that's, that makes you feel good. You, it, sometimes we're so busy in the day to day, the, the minutiae of all the things we have to get done in a day or in a week, having a family portrait on the wall in a, in a place that's prominent in the home and mm -hmm. can be passed by uh, we're going to look, mm -hmm. I want people to stop and look at that or just see that and, and kind of give them a subtle reminder of why they're doing what they're doing and keep them on target for mm -hmm. their for their goals. Mm -hmm. And um, even if it just puts a smile on their face mm -hmm. when normally without it, it might not. That's yeah. that's huge. That's yeah. so important. Yeah. And it's great to see how the family has changed over the years mm -hmm. as new members of the family are added. And unfortunately, some are lost and mm -hmm. as the kids are growing up. It's great and, to see those changes in portraits. Yeah, and, and we're talking about frequency of portraits. We have mm -hmm. some clients that schedule every year. They do their annual yeah. family portrait, yeah. and it's just great. They love it. It's fun. That's they try, nice. they get into it. They, they uh, one family uh, likes to have different colors. So every year yeah. is a different color. Mm -hmm. So all of them wear one color. Mm -hmm. And as you, as you look in their in their home, in their family room, you can see the different years, the different yeah. colors. Yeah. It's so much oh, fun, neat. and we're, and we try to change it up. Um, it's great. And uh, it doesn't have to be a huge investment every time, but it just it's important to document. It's important mm -hmm. to, the, important, the important thing is to do it. Mm -hmm. And talking about kids growing up and, and getting older, you do senior portraits, I mm -hmm. know, for, for yeah. local students. Mm -hmm. And tell us about that. What, what, what makes a really good senior portrait session? Uh, a great senior portrait session really showcases that student, mm -hmm. that young person. They're approaching a milestone in their life. They've been going to school for all these years. It's about ready to, to end. And they've developed into a young person. They're not quite an adult yet. They're mm -hmm. not still, they're not a kid anymore. And, but they've developed interests and hobbies and loves. And with our senior portrait sessions, we love to incorporate those things. And it could be a pet, mm -hmm. it could be an activity. Um, we do a lot with uh, kids that are into sports. Some are into acting and, and the theater music. Uh, I love finding out what those mm -hmm. things are and really building it up and, and making it look amazing for them. And this is the time of year to be doing that because our kids, before we know it, yes. seniors are going to be going away to college in just yes. a few months here. Exactly. So, so if you haven't had your senior portrait done, mm -hmm. it's almost it's almost too late. <laughs> so get it done now. Mm -hmm. We're already looking for the kids from the class of 2017 right. to serve as models for the, for the next year. So... We'd love to hear about it, hear, hear from you. Yeah. And you talked a little bit about some of the personal projects that you've created, mm -hmm. such as the dog tails. What else have you done that you're really proud of? Well, as mentioned, uh, we had one called the Beards of Farmington mm -hmm. Valley. And I wanted to do something interesting and different. <clears throat> and I was looking at some of the great master photographers of the past for inspiration. And I found a portrait of Yusuf Karsh, I'm sorry, a portrait by Yusuf Karsh of Ernest Hemingway. Mm -hmm. And he's got a beard and a big turtleneck sweater and he's kind of looks stoic. And it's a black and white portrait and it's very dramatic <coughs> lighting. And I says, man, that guy looks like a hero. Like he could face a you know, lion with his bare hands or chop down a tree mm -hmm. <laughs> with his bare hands or something. Mm -hmm. And I said, how cool would it be if we could take something like that, that look and create that for local people in the Farmington Valley, local mm -hmm. men who, who've grown beards. And the beards seem to have grown in popularity. Mm -hmm. So we put the call out and we got a bunch of models. I think we, we, uh, we, we did it two years in a row and we got a, I'm sure a lot of people have seen them. Those were those were at town hall. They've been at the library, and uh, they were very stoic. And we did interview questions about them and their beard, and if their beard has a name and how long they've had it. <laughs> we even had a um, three people <coughs> here from Simsbury, uh, three generations of beards, mm. and the uh, the grandfather's beard. He he started growing it in uh, February of 1970. 
Oh, when the wow. town had their tricentennial celebration for 1670 oh to 1970. Goodness. And he'd grown it all that time? And he's kept it ever since. Oh, my goodness. So I told him that beard is about uh, one month older than I am. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now everybody knows my birthday, or wow. my birth month, wow. anyway. Yeah, yeah. So um, that was cool. So it's just all these great mm -hmm. stories that come out of it, and mm -hmm. you get to meet the people and, and hear the different things. and So it's fun. And so are there any projects that you're working on now or that are going to be coming up in the near future? Yes, we're currently working on Project Hat. Mm. We're looking for fascinating hats and the people who wear them. That would be a great one. And we've, yeah. it's starting to build momentum and, and growth. We had uh, a woman yesterday had a big, huge white hat that she wore Ooh. at her wedding. That was from England. She had another amazing hat that we photographed that she bought in Chicago. That's by Tassel. In fact, I just got a text message this morning that uh, uh, it was Kathy McAfee, she's a local businesswoman uh -huh. in town, mm -hmm. and she bought this hat in Chicago years ago, and she just did some research online and found out it was a, it's a unique handmade hat, and this Ooh. actually has a, a purple ribbon with a number of what, how many of them th that were made, and, it, yeah. and it, she thinks she may have actually purchased it from the hat maker himself. Wow. But it's wow. a great story, and we're gonna tell it, and then we don't have a date set, but we will have an exhibition of mm -hmm. our favorites from this project. Oh, that should be great. I can't, I'll look forward to that. Oh, and we yes. have another one. Yes. After this, starting very soon, or concurrently actually, we are looking for uh, dogs that are owned by local celebrities. Okay. So we're, we're going to start with that. Any local celebrities yes. are watching out there? Yes, <laughs> we have a list. We have a list. We've already, we've already done um, Jackson, which is the beautiful dog that belongs to Courtney from Kiss Radio from 95.7 oh, okay. FM. Oh, okay. So, and she just absolutely loves her portraits. Aww. So we're going to build on that too. So Great. Send Great. them over. Great. If you'd like to be, a, if you like to be considered as a celebrity but yeah. aren't one, we could make an exception for you. <laughs> okay. And do you have any tips that will help anybody look better in a photo session? Great tips. There are so many tips to look better. Um, the, <laughs> The first one is get somebody who really knows what they're doing with posing mm -hmm. and, and lighting. There's so many different things, but um, makeup is important, <coughs> especially for business portrait, but any, any time you're going to be in front of the camera, it's good to have your makeup done by somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, not saying that if you do your own every day, it's that you don't know what you're doing, but those who are professional know exactly what to do for camera makeup, and it's, it's different, and it's um, important, and it will make a huge difference, mm -hmm. and you'll love the way you look. Um, also, clothing. Mm -hmm. This is what we do with, what we recommend to our subjects is to stay away from any kind of loud prints mm -hmm. that could be distracting. You mean like these pants I'm wearing? Uh, this is not going <laughs> to go there, but thank you. We can see the pants. So, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> that would, it's because we'd just be staring at your pants all day. So in the, in the well, photograph, really it looks great right, in yeah. person. And, but in a photograph, when everything's still and nothing's moving, <laughs> our eyes tend to go to the lightest part mm -hmm. of the portrait first and then kind of move through it. So um, if we have something really bright on, mm -hmm. it's brighter than our skin tone, that's going to draw, draw attention away from our face. And <coughs> as far as I'm concerned, I mean, our face is what we're, how we recognize each other. Right, right. And it's the most important part. It's the part that expresses emotion. So we want attention to go to, to the faces <coughs> in the photograph and the sure. portrait and not so much in what they're wearing. Um, I've even had photos where I think we had, a, it was a grandparents in town here and they brought their grandkids. And every kid had a different pastel colored polo shirt on or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And because of the way we photograph, we can, we can go back and forth between color or, or monochromatic black and white sepia. And um, you, you're seeing the difference of the same image with all the colors mm -hmm. versus the um, a monochromatic mm -hmm. sepia tone. Mm -hmm. Your eyes just go all over to the, all the colors when it's color, but when it's, mm -hmm. when it's monochromatic, you just see the faces, you feel the emotion and the mm -hmm. bond between mm -hmm. all of them, so. Mm -hmm. Nice. I would imagine you have had people tell you that they haven't had their portrait taken yet because they want to lose weight. They're waiting to lose weight. I bet that's a good one you hear, right? Oh, yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> what do you say to that? I call that procrastination. <laughs> and it sounds good. It sounds reasonable. I understand the, 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 the thought behind that. But um, the problem is 
especially in a family portrait situation with young kids, they grow mm -hmm. and they don't wait. Mm -hmm. They're not going to wait for your, mm -hmm. your target goal of right. your weight number or whatever. Right, so right, right. Um, my clients benefit from my experience of posing and lighting so that the parts of you that you're less favor, uh, that you're less um, help fond me. of, fond of <laughs> thank yes. you, there's an F word there, the, the yeah, ones you're yeah. less fond of are, uh, are hidden and, and the attention is drawn to your favorite ones. So uh, that's not an excuse. Just yeah. get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Next that's year's good. family portrait, <laughs> <laughs> you'll have a different, you know, and whatever. You have great before and yeah, after photos. Just, yeah. just do it, like yeah. Nike says. Yeah. So you gave us some tips for all of us to look better in a photo. How about mm -hmm. any tips for the novice weekend photographer? Any tips on how to take better photos? Yeah, photography has become so popular, mm -hmm. especially now with our smartphones, mm -hmm. that the quality of the cameras in those smartphones are just amazing. Yeah. And we can do amazing yeah, things with those. True. And I love how easy it is for me to always have a camera on me at all yeah, times with I that. Know. Yeah, I know. And that's what one of the first tips I would say is always have a camera with mm -hmm. you, whether it is a smartphone or something a little more... Uh, heavy duty, whatever that case may be, and practice. Just always be looking for things that attract you and that, that uh, are visually interesting and practice photographing those things. Uh, learn the equipment. Uh, even with the smartphone, there's a lot of little things you can do to adjust brightness before you take the photo. Mm -hmm. You can, uh, there's something called HDR on, on iPhones, I know. There's different things that you can do as you're capturing the image to make a better quality image. Uh, even with a, a point and shoot camera or an SLR camera, there's a lot of different things you can do. And if you never pick up your manual and look <laughs> at it and try to make an effort to learn what those are, you're gonna be limited. You're gonna be stuck in automatic mm -hmm. modes that let the computer and the camera do the decision making for you. Yeah. And if you do that, you're gonna have average looking <coughs> things. But if you take the time and you try to, mm -hmm. Do a little research and try some, learn something, try it out. Learn something, try it mm -hmm. out. And make it, a, don't try to do it all at one time, but make it a long-term project and it's very enjoyable and you'll see benefits in, yeah. your, in your images yeah. very quickly. So read the manual and practice. <laughs> yeah, that's yes. it. Yeah. That's not what you want to hear, yeah. but it's the truth. So. And what about the person who says, oh, professional photography is so beautiful. I wish I could do it, but it's just so expensive. I can't afford it. Well, that's interesting. Um, you know, a Matthew J. Wagner portrait might not be for everyone, mm -hmm. but we do have a lot of options, and it might it, it might be more affordable than you think. And conversely, can you afford not to have something mm -hmm. really good that mm -hmm. looks nice of mm -hmm. you and your family? Mm -hmm. You're creating valuable memories, for yeah. sure, through that. Thank you, Matthew. So what are you currently working on? Um, anything besides the hats project or? The hats and, and the, uh, the celebrity the dogs, dogs are yeah. the big thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. And are you doing a lot of these individual dog portraits? Have yes. you found they're, they're becoming very do, popular? Yeah. And speaking of individual, we actually have some, some people wonder, well, I have three dogs. Can I bring all of them at one mm. time? And we say, sure, it's not yeah. a problem. Uh, I think, I'm trying to think if that's the most we've had at one time. I know I had a bunch of little King Charles Cavalier Spaniel puppies. I think we had five or six of those at one time. That was crazy. Yeah, oh, <laughs> but that was fun. Yeah, but um, uh. but yeah, it's. Um, I think we're going to put one of the images up of of two dogs that I, that I really was one of my favorites from the project, mm -hmm. Teddy and Duke, and the owners love it when I'm able to create a portrait where they're both looking at the viewer, mm -hmm. and I don't guarantee that that will happen, but we usually are able to deliver on yeah. that, surprisingly so. Yeah. So I it's don't make so promises, difficult. but I, I love it when it happens, and it usually does. Yeah, it's difficult to, port to photograph our own pets. They, they never seem to want to cooperate. Oh, so yeah. if you have a knack for it, then that's definitely the thing to do. Go to Matthew. We've got it down. <laughs> yeah. We've got it down, yeah. especially with dogs. Cats, that's the next thing. Yeah. A lot of people want us to do cats. We're, uh, they're, they're on my Even website. Even more challenging, I'm sure. But uh, someone said that to, do, to photograph cats, now, what was it? With dogs, you can um, train them and, and get what, you can get them to do what you want based uh, uh, for affection. Yeah. They can use yeah. affection and snacks yeah. with yeah. dogs. Yeah. With cats, it's pretty much food only. So you have to, I like, think you have to like let your, not feed your cat for a while <laughs> before you bring them in so that you can use food as a, as a bar bar bargaining chip or something yeah, like that. Yeah, motivation, right, but, right. Yeah, we're looking to do more of that as well. 
Anything else we should know about Matthew J. Wagner Fine Photography? MatthewJWagner.com. And I think my phone number will be on the screen or yes, something like that. Yes, you can that. see now some. Now it has to be because I said that. You can see that. some incredible <laughs> examples of his work on his website. Yeah, we'll come yes, to the website. Beautiful pieces. Uh, we're going to be rebranding very soon with a new logo, a uh, new website. So it's very exciting. Stay tuned. Right. I think we're dropping the J in Matthew J. Wagner. It will be Matthew okay. Wagner Photography. All so right. All right. What does tuned. the J stand for? John. My great-grandfather's okay. name was John. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Matthew. You're welcome. Thank and thank you. you for joining us. I've been here today with Matthew of Matthew Wagner of Matthew J. Wagner Fine Photography, our featured member of the month for the month of March. Oh, thank and you stop again. by the studio when you're in the, in the neighborhood. Yes. I hope you'll join us again. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.